Hi, I'm Dave King. I'm here at Reverb. I'm a drummer, composer, um, probably most known for my work with a group called The Bad Plus. The thing with The Bad Plus, even though we are predominantly an original music ensemble, in fact, all three of us are composers, the, the, you know, the attention that we've gotten over the years, especially in the early years for you know, deconstructing some pop music and some rock music, we've always felt as a part of the jazz tradition. I mean, the jazz standard book is, is pop music of the day. We feel it has more potency if you don't ignore your life experience. If you could somehow be really honest with your life experience and not pretend that you, you know, you've been in a bubble and you only listen to bebop or something. I mean, there's been so much music that, you know, you can check out. All of those are texts that can be used for the modern improviser, and that's what we've always thought of it. There are a lot of texts and tools to work with and some great melodies, and that's what we think is more aligned with the jazz tradition than ignoring it. You know, there's a place to be, you know, the workhorse um, musician and you play it all and you're all styles and all levels and you're pro and everything like that. But, but there is also a place in, in this music for, for real creativity and that, that demands more than just some straight chops thing or just playing the song. You know, I mean, Stuart Copeland, all these guys, John Bonham, there was a touch. There was not only an absolutely recognizable sound and touch, but it, it, it was integrated with the sound of the band and the, and the importance of the drums as a, as a melodic textural instrument, a touch instrument, doesn't have to be limited to just jazz. And that's just putting yourself in the position to have to make something up. It can be two minutes long or something, but it forces you to deal with each instrument like it's an orchestral member. And so Ed Blackwell would be someone that I would talk about, about listening to about melodic drumming, the, the, the appropriation of parade drumming in New Orleans or something. Ed Blackwell was one of my heroes, so even here... You know, Ed, the way you can touch this music... There's ways to hit the drums that are beyond you know, all your chops and all your stuff that you already worked out. You know, it's just different mel melodic uh, touches. I mean, John Bonham was a master at, he was so keenly aware of not only great R&B music of the 60s, because he was. And he was also keenly aware of jazz. He had great rudimental chops as well. But he didn't pretend he was those things. He brought all of those things into a new text. But there's no way when you listen to him that you are listening to someone who did not know exactly what the groove needed to be in a very esoteric space. It's a very high level of nuanced listening going on. So meanwhile, he's like, you know, crazy and out of his mind, I guess, and like alcoholic and all these other things. And he was like bashing and doing these things. But the thing is, is he is a completely dialed aesthetic. John Bonham fits in that, in that canon of the highest artist because of those nuances, because he was aware of those nuances of touch. So basically what I would do is, that, let's say you have a technical agenda for what you're practicing or when you're just working on your instrument, doesn't matter what instrument, get your technical regimen together, whatever you're working on, and then, you know, at some point in time, improvise a little solo. So I'll close by improvising a little vignette of some sort. And, um, and again, just the exploration of touch without the idea that I'm gonna play at a set rhythm, for instance, or I'm not gonna play, it's gonna be more like a tonal thing, but they can also use rhythms and use polyrhythms and use all your macked out stuff, whatever you want. Thank you.